Hey guys and gals, and Ari here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Jorgen's Path. So, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? We're about to play a game of Spin the Bottle, and I'm wondering with Jorgen involved, just how that's going to play out this time. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Shin, you are up, and let's go. Okay. What? No! You're supposed to ask a question or give a dare to a person the bottle points at. Oh, so it's truth or dare. Wow, I was really confused here for a moment. That's fine, then. Should be fun. So, for a start, we need a bottle. Anyone finish their beer yet? Lake looks around the room, but no one replies. Okay, I can fix that. He raises the bottle to his snout and downs the remaining half of his beer in a few big gulps. Damn. By the way, are we still waiting for anyone? I don't see either Rune or Bjorn here. I thought Lake would invite them, too. Rune replied that he's busy. And Bjorn told me he's not coming. He didn't feel like it. Is everything alright with him? I think so, yeah. He's just not in the mood for socializing. So, are we ready to play? Yeah. But yeah, let's start. Okay, everyone ready? About the rules. No taking back. No altering the questions or dares after they're asked and anything goes. Sounds fine? Hmm, we could use an app or roll a die. Does anyone here have a die? Um, could I go first? That would solve the problem. Oh, sure, go ahead. It's time for Jorgen to spin the bottle, which stops on... Oh, Lake. Truth or dare? Uh, give me a dare, too. Hmm, what to ask you? Oh, I know. Show us the last picture in your gallery. Jorgen! Can I show it only to you? Hmm... No, that won't do. I already said show us. I can't take it back. Oh my, Jorgen is ruthless. Better not get on his bad side ever. Uh... <gasps> Lake thinks for a moment before pulling out his phone and unlocking it. With a wide smile, he points the camera at us and takes a photo, then turns the phone towards us. Here, the last picture in my gallery. Oh, Lake. Hey, isn't that cheating? Shouldn't he show us the picture that was the last one when you were asking the question? I didn't specify that. So he gets off on a technicality. Okay, so I wanted to say one thing quickly. Regarding the uh, creepy story that Lake tells around the... Uh... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till we get to that. I'm gonna wait till we get to that. I have something to say about that because it reminds me of something I saw recently. Anyway, too bad. I wanted to see what he was so sheepish about. Your turn now. Lake spins the bottle and it stops on. Torolf! A dare, please. Okay, so, um... Give me an invite to your... Give me an invite to your chirper AD. AD? What's that? You don't follow it yet? What? I was sure you did. Quick web search doesn't give me any responses. All the results are about ads on chirper. What are you talking about? If you don't know, then maybe it's better to keep it that way. Hmm. Cryptic. Send a link. Thank you. Oh, it's even public. And followed. Charles spins the bottle and it stops on. Travis, Travis, hello. Truth or dare for you? Truth, please. Hmm, I don't know much about you yet. You seem like a very positive person, though. What's the most important, what's the most important to you in life? My friends, definitely. I like being around people. Without company, life would be pretty pointless, wouldn't it? And I'd do whatever I can for them. That's kind of you. Travis spins the bottle and stops squarely on. Jorgen. Truth, please. I have something for you. What's your favorite TV series? Oh, TV series. I don't really watch TV. It happens in a long time, at least. I think I have to go back a bit in memories to find something. I tried watching B Baking Bread in high school, but I wasn't a fan. Oh, uh, I actually started watching Breaking Bad recently. I'd never seen it before. Yes, I know. In insane as that may sound, I am a very busy dragon. <laughs> Let's see. What else was there? Oh, I know. I like to hate life robots. This is wonderful. I love this. Love, Death, and Robots is an incredible show. Hate life robots. Not all the, ep not all the episodes, but some of them were really imaginative. And Tweet Peaks. No! Bad Jorgen. Bad! Stop getting horny on here. And Twink Peaks, of course. That's a classic. 
Ooh, I've watched Hate Life Robots too. That's so great. I've heard there's a new season. We could try watching it together later if you want. Maybe. Not on the camp. There's too little time. Sure, maybe sometime later then. It's time for Jorgen to spin the bottle. He grabs it and sends it rotating, and when it's and when it stops on, and when it stops, it stops on me. Jorgen, I wonder what he'll come up with. Let's do, Let's do both. Let's go with a dare. Hmm, I have an idea. Do you have a chirper? Yeah, why? Show us your most liked chirp. Oh, I'm not really sure which one it was. Maybe one of the photos I uploaded. I don't have that many. I could go through them quickly and find it. Okay, just give me a moment. I have to find it. Blah. No rush. But don't you dare delete anything. I'm watching you. I take out my phone, open Chirper, and start scrolling. Hmm, I have more chirps than I thought. I guess I have maybe, I have maybe 30. Meanwhile, my page seems endless. I stop at one of the chirps with four photos attached from a concert in Anslow and the ride behind the ride home back from it. Eleven likes. I don't think I've ever surpassed that. This one, I think. I pass the phone to Jorgen, hoping that he won't click on anything beside that one tweet. Hmm, nice photos. You have a keen eye. Thanks. My cheeks get hot. Feels nice to be praised. What's that band playing? Uh, Nimble Foxes. You might know them. They aren't exactly a niche band. Ah, Lake played them a few times. They're quite cool. I see why people like them. Anzo during the night has such an otherworldly feeling to it, and you captured it nicely. Jurgen passes me my phone back, and I put it back in my pocket as quick as I can. It feels weird to not to have it with me. Now I spin the bottle. A few spins and it stops. Back on Jorgen. Oh, so truth or dare? Jorgen, there's something unfamiliar in his eyes, hidden behind his ice-cold stare. I have a chance to pick his brain. Question, please. I still don't really understand what happened between us on the roof. I'm mostly wondering, is he interested in me? Let's see. Go back. Let's see. What do you do, truth? Truth for me, please. Hmm. Let's see. Have you ever broken into anywhere? An old abandoned building or a very operational bank? Doesn't really matter where. Oh, I don't really know. I don't think so. Wait, let me think. My life back home wasn't that thrilling. I don't know if there was even a place worth breaking into anywhere near. Oh, unless you can, unless you count. Uh... Miko, do you remember that? Uh, we have once went into the high school building after the closing hours and found the door to the basement open. Right, we had a picnic in the chemistry class. I don't know if it technically counts as breaking in as it was already open, but yeah. I think it does. You're a criminal. Congratulations. When you put it that way, it sounds less thrilling and more terrifying. Now I spin the bottle. A few spins and it stops back on Jorgen. Alright, so we're going to go with the dare one. I liked that better. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get to the next choice. Actually, uh, what is it? Refs? Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. What is your type? Are you single? Let's do what's your type. Hmm, I don't know if I have one set in stone. But there are some things I like. Lean build, for example. Lean build? I am fairly lean. Well, maybe a bit more average, but still on the lean side. Androgyny and queerness, that too. People who dare to be a bit different. Sounds less like me, though I guess I am at least somewhat androgynous, if not in looks, then in behavior. And stripes. Jorgen winks. Wait, heart sh starts racing as I grasp the implications of his words. Uh, tiger stripes, for example? Possibly. Suddenly everything goes dark. Ah! Are you single? Yes, it's not too much of a secret. My question is, why are you asking? Jorgen winks at me, smiling mischievously. That's, hey, it's my turn for questions. That's against the rules. Fine, I'll wait. Suddenly everything goes dark. It's dark in the room, save for the warm glow of the fireplace. Huh? What's happening? We've lost power. It should come back shortly. Outages last below half an hour, usually. Half an hour? Half an hour? That's cool. Oh, I love power outages. Huh? What? Why? Who likes power outages? Just look around. Look how atmospheric it is here now. We could have just turned off the light, you know. It's not the same. Not even now. Nah, now, even if we wanted to, we can't turn it back on. The difference seems to be subtle, but I think I understand what he means. This is like a communal experience. Something exciting, an extraordinary event. When was the last time you didn't have power? I don't even remember. You're right. It has its charm. But it's also kind of spooky, in a good way. Oh, maybe there's something supernatural at play here. You know, power just doesn't go out without a reason. How would that work? 
save it already. I'm sure I did. I don't know. That's what supernatural means. It's inexplicable. Ooh, maybe there's a killer on the loose, and he cut the power so it would be easier to murder us. How would cutting the power help them? It's only alerted us. Hey, stop ruining my fun. Oh, I know what we should do. How about we tell some scary stories? Shouldn't we first go and see what's going on? We know what's going on. We lost power. So if nobody knows any, I remember one. It's from this area, too. What do you say? Sounds... Sounds... Ugh, excuse me. Ugh, excuse me. Let me drink some water real quick. Ah, Delicious California water. Sounds good. Go ahead, I'm curious about the story. Spooky stories time! Blake straightens himself on the chair and looks at us expectantly. We all sit down on the chairs and the couch facing him, some excitedly, some hesitantly. The light of the fireplace illuminates him from the side, giving his features a sharp look. So, this is a story I've heard from a guy at uni. He's friends with a group that often goes for fjord trips, and this happened to them three years ago. So, I'm going to say right now, the story that he's telling, it, remi it's, it, it's, um, it reminds me of an old, I think it was a 70s movie, called Screams on a Winter Night. It's about a bunch of people who are in it, go to a, the woods, this winter cabin, and they start hearing these weird noises out at night. It's actually a fairly creepy movie. And then they start, they start telling each other all these spooky stories, and in all the spooky stories, all the, all the main, all the characters in the cabin are in the stories. Really a cool movie. I, I highly suggest you guys check it out. It's called thing. I believe it's called Screams on a Screams on a Winter Night. All right. <clears throat> looking online for places to stay around these parts for an early winter trip, they found a neat looking cabin that was dirt cheap. They booked it right away, happy that they found a deal so good. So they booked the cabin for the four of them. Chatted a bit over email with the owner, who seemed pretty nice, and got ready for the trip. They arrived at the town by car in the afternoon and met with the owner of the cabin, an older Bernese mountain dog gentleman. He gave them the directions and the key to the cabin, and wished them a thrilling stay. The cabin was further from the town than they thought, and they drove through frozen plains and forests for almost half an hour. But when they arrived and saw a picturesque meadow where the cabin was, they thought that it was worth coming. The cabin itself looked nice, too. It was a simple wooden structure, but it had a certain charm to it. It was only October, but the weather was really cold that year, and everything was covered with a thick layer of snow, just like now. Once they, en they entered the cabin and found it neat and cozy, perfect for a short stay. It was equipped with a kit with a kitchenette, three beds, a couch, a table, and a few chairs. So pretty much everything they needed. There was also a stack of plain wax candles and matches on the table, and a few old paintings were hanging on the walls. One of them, depicting a forest in the winter, unsettled them for some reason. The more they looked at it, the more they felt that something in the woods stared back at them. They ended up taking the painting down and hiding it behind the couch for the time being, and continued unpacking. Afterwards, Afterwards, they went for a walk around the area just to see if there's anything interesting there. But as they walked through the woods, they felt the same unsettling presence that stared at them from the painting. Spooked, they retreated back to the cabin. As soon as they were back in, though, the door locked securely behind them, they started to laugh at themselves. How silly was that, to spook themselves over some old painting? It was already getting late and dark, so they decided to stay in for the day. They wouldn't be bored for sure. They were, a, they, were a, they were a partying bunch, and they brought speakers and a lot of booze with them. So they spent their whole rest of the day and a half of the night partying, drinking, singing, and having a great time. When they woke up the next day, it was already afternoon. The day was cloudy, and it must have been snowing all night. As they looked outside, they saw that everything, including their car, was covered in pillowy white mounds. As the others were busy preparing food, one of them went out to clear the snow from the car. But as she opened the door, she saw a terrifying sight. The whole front door and frame had deep, regular scratches as if made by with blades or monstrous claws. As she looked down, she saw paw prints that were already covered by fresh snow, but they seemed unnaturally huge. She walked through the, around the cabin and saw similar markings on one window frame and more paw steps leading into the woods. Terrified, she hurried back inside and closed the door behind her, thinking the skies above that they locked all the windows the previous night. The rest got pretty spooked seeing her all trembling and breathless. They led her to the couch and let her rest for a short while before she recounted what she had seen outside. The others thought she was trying to trick them, but when they opened the door, they, were la they weren't laughing anymore. Terrified, they gathered around the table and tried to make sense of it. Was it a burglar trying to break in to steal their stuff, or some psycho wanting to murder them? And why did they leave so many marks? They all agreed that the best course of action was to call the owner of the cabin. They pulled straws, and the same girl that went outside in the morning was tasked with calling. She did, but of course there was no reception. 
Spooked, they agreed to grab the more valuable of their belongings and ride back to the town. Packing only took them a short while. They left all the mess behind and got into the car. Rolling back the road they came, they were sure they're safe, until they got stuck in the snow just after five minutes of riding from the cabin. One of them, one of them wanted to continue forward on pause. Finally, they all agreed it was too late and cold for that, and the town was too far away. If they were driving there for half an hour, walking would take much, much longer. Instead, they decided to go back to the cabin and try calling the police, or at least hope that the cabin owner would pay them a visit. They walked back in silence, too terrified for any small talk. Along the way, they regularly checked the reception, but there was still none. But still, there was still none. By the time they got back, it was already dark, and only the full moon illuminated the snow-covered meadow. The cabin was just as they left it. The cuts were still there on the door and frames, but it looked like no one or nothing tried to get inside while they were out. They entered the cabin and once again locked the door securely and checked all the windows. They didn't have any weapons, but they thought that as long as they're awake, no one would try to break in again. They decided to stay until the morning. Once it got brighter and a bit warmer outside, and then try to walk back to the town. They all fell silent. That's when they heard heavy steps outside. Lake takes a dramatic pause, and I'm so engrossed in the story I swear I can hear paw steps myself. I glance at the corridor and see nothing but oppressive darkness. Lake takes a phone out of his pocket and turns on the torch. Their only sources of light was their, was their phones, but they were too terrified to move. Finally, one of them grabbed his phone and pointed it at the window. Lake lifts his phone dramatically and shines a light around the room. And behind the window, they saw... Behind the window where Lake is looking, there's a towering figure standing and looking inside. A loud thud shakes the whole room. It looks like Lake fell back from the chair he was in. Fucking hell, Lake, are you okay? I run up to Lake, who's sitting on the floor behind the chair, looking at me with a terrified gaze. Carvin! What the hell? I, th I was just I, I was just improvising this. Really weird how... There is apparently a presence in the woods nearby. Very strange how this story uh, mimics that. Very spooky. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!